Okay, I'm in the middle of another RV project. This time I want to be able to monitor my fuel pressure of my 8.1 Vortec engine. Uh, people know this particular, I got the workhorse chassis, the W24, the fuel pumps located in the tank, and if it ever goes out on you while you're on the road, it could be a real pain to change. You got an 80 gallon fuel tank to drop and all that stuff. So I thought it'd be a good idea to be able to monitor the pressure, keep an eye on it. If I see it starting to get weak over time, I can change it out be before I get stranded somewhere. And I found this on eBay, not eBay, Amazon, which I found a little over 80 bucks. Um, here's the, that's the part number of it. It's made by Max Toe, and uh, it handles up to 100 PSI. What you get in the box, you get your wires here, and you get this little sending unit. Now, to make it work on the 8.1 Vortec, I had to buy this 1 8 uh, coupler, and then I had to get a, a 90 here that goes from 1 8 uh, pipe thread to the thread that fits the Schrader valve. And you can see it's got the tapered fitting in there. I believe it's com this is a common fitting used on a lot of hyd hydraulics. I forget exactly what they call that type of fitting. But anyway, that's what I'm fixing to put on there, and it should be a pretty easy project. Uh, you got the, uh, you just have to remove the Schrader valve. There that is. Get that out of the way. And I put, a, I chose to put a 90 on this, so I didn't want it sticking straight up in the air so high. Snug that up, and I just got to run my wires up along the wiring harness, up through the firewall, into the dash. I got to decide where I'm going to mount it and test it, and we'll, we'll see how this works. Okay, next step, I drilled my hole, with the, just with the two-inch hole saw, and now I can drop my gauge right in there, and I snug fit. Oh, I was going to show you this. If you're going to put one in this same type of plastic dash, there's a little, little rib in here, so keep your hole kind of low. You know, just just past this edge here, and that way you won't. You'll, you have plenty of room. It'll drop right in there, and you can get your brackets on the back and uh, be ready to go. So now all I got to do is tap into some wires here. I got many to choose from, but I'll get that done and. We'll see how it looks. Okay, I've got it all wired up now, and it was real easy. You see my wire, it's dark here right now, so lighting's not the best. But there's the wire going from the sending unit. Zip tied it around the wiring harness, and then I drilled a hole uh, in that metal plate that, that runs right here below the dash. Drilled me up with a 3 8 drill bit. I punched me a hole right down in there. Run my wires up through. And on the back of the the gauge, you just got two connections, one coming from the um, sending unit and one going for your power source. And let me see here, show you how that was. So all we have to hook up here, you got one wire that's hot all the time, and then you want another another wire that's switched off the ignition switch. So I got that got that done. Let me see here. Um, then also it tells you in the manual you should put a fuse in it. It doesn't come with a fuse, so I got me an inline fuse, three amp, to protect that circuit. There's also another optional wire here that you can, um, if you want it to dim down when you turn on your headlights, you can hook this orange wire up up to your headlight circuit, and as soon as you turn on your headlights, it will dim this down. So I'm gonna try it first. If it's too bright, I'll hook that up. But if it don't bother me, I won't worry about it. And where's my I swear, okay, my grounds. I just run me a screw right into the frame, picked up a, gr a ground right there. So that's pretty simple. And we'll kick it on here and show you a little bit what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Go back a little bit. Gives you both analog and digital readout. 
That's pretty cool. I'm going to start it up and see what the difference is. That's just sitting there. With the fuel pump's not on now, that's just the pressure it's still on the line. Here we go. Finish mounting it back in that hole and clean up my mess and get this dashboard all put back together and we'll have this project wrapped up. Okay, job's all finished, cleaned up, cleaned up my mess pretty well. And here's what, what it looks like. Just start up here. So when I'm driving down the road, this will be my view. Sixty-three psi. Okay. Now we'll shut it off here. Put it back on accessory so it lights back up. Oh, and also playing with it, I found out there is a this little button here. You can change the brightness of it. Push and hold, and you can make it one, two, or three. I mean, one's plenty, I guess. Uh, it's not too bright, but maybe during daytime driving you might want a little brighter. Uh, but anyways, the reason I wanted to put this in is because this is on the workhorse uh, W24 chassis. Uh, and the, our fuel pump is, of course, located in the fuel tank. And then I've read on the forums when these fuel, fuel pumps fail, then it could be a very expensive deal to, to change out. Because you got to drop the 80 gallon fuel tank, and I think the pump alone is over $400 just to buy the fuel pump. So I thought this for you know 80 something dollars is probably a good investment. I can monitor my fuel pressure as I'm driving down the road. I don't know what normal is, and if I notice anything abnormal over time, maybe I can have a little early warning system to a fuel pump failure, and I can get it. I can change it out myself and not be stranded on the road somewhere. Uh, and something else, uh, once upon a time, I've had this happen to me when out west climbing up, up the mountains on a hot day, I experienced a vapor lock issue, what I believe was vapor lock, because um, it just lost all power, it just idled, pulled off the road, let it sit for a while, and then I was fine. And after investigating that, I found out that um, my fuel line running uh, from the fuel tank up to the engine ran very close within like five inches of the muffler and uh, it was getting very hot so I got me um, one of those um, like a insulating sleeve you can slide over the fuel line and uh, got that took care of I believe I don't think that would happen anymore but this would be for anybody who's having any vapor lock issues or they think they're you know going up mountains and losing power if they had this gauge and it truly was a, a vapor lock issue you would notice the fuel pressure dropping and that could be a, a very handy thing for for troubleshooting such a problem but anyways that's she's all wrapped up hope you get yours done soon bye